if I'm lucky, I will not get stung. With over one million species worldwide, insects are quite possibly the most successful group of animals on our planet. They've evolved some of the most cunning survival strategies in the animal kingdom, from camouflage to armor to flight. And some of them are absolutely terrifying. I've traveled all over, searching for some of the natural world's deadliest secrets, and I believe that insects may be hiding some of the most toxic yet. I'm actually not going all that far today. I am in my literal backyard because I wanna show you some venomous, actually venomous insects that are probably in yours too. Check this out. This bush is absolutely buzzing with honeybees. These little guys might be cute and fuzzy looking, but they are absolutely venomous. Honeybees are actually not native. This is not a native species that we're looking at right here, but they have been naturalized. They are still super useful and they help manage our ecosystems here in the US. Honeybees are probably the most recognizable bee, but there are a ton of different types which come in all shapes and sizes. They prefer different flower and habitat types, but one thing's for sure, many of them are venomous. Bee venom varies by species, but many of the garden variety bees actually sport venom on par with venomous snakes. When you're stung, it's not just a barbed stinger poking into you. That stinger is a venom delivery mechanism designed to inject you full of their unique toxic cocktail. One sting, if you're not allergic, is really not that big a deal. It hurts, it's not fun, it's a good warning to stay away, but it's when they're defending the hive that you can run into some serious, serious issues. Right now, they're all foraging, they're looking for nectar, drinking their fill, and then filling up on extra to bring back home to the nest. That bright yellow coloration, it does advertise a warning. It says, hey, don't mess with me, I can mess you up. You get swarmed by the nest. The venom of the honeybee is actually fairly toxic. Even if you're not allergic, a serious volume of stings could still be a medical emergency. Especially if you're dealing with one of the honeybee's mutant cousins, the killer bee. That was actually a hybrid that humans made. And let me tell you, they are really unpleasant. They are aggressive, they are toxic, and they can actually kill you. This next one's gonna be a little bit tricky, at least to find intentionally. What I'm looking for, see this here? That's lichen. What I'm looking for is lichen that moves because the next one, at least the easiest of them to find, packs a bunch of lichen on their back and uses it as camouflage. Bees aren't the only venomous insects in your backyard, and what I'm after is considerably more alien looking. The larvae of the insect order Neuroptera are venomous hunters that have a few different ways of subduing their prey. I'm searching for the active, prowling lacewing larvae, which camouflage themselves with moss, lichen, and debris. But you also have the sit-and-wait predators and the iconic pitfall traps of the antlions. There he is, there he is, right there. Wow. That's a tiny one there. As larvae, these insects are formidable. The terrifying jaws they sport are actually hollow. When they finally overpower their prey, they inject them full of a paralyzing venom before they begin to eat. As far as we know, this venom has no effect on humans, and I have never heard of anyone experiencing a bite from any of the Neuroptera. They may be creepy, but as long as they're patrolling your garden, they can be really helpful pest control. But their soft bodies mean they need shelter and cover, because larger animals could easily overpower and eat them. As a result, I sometimes have luck flipping for them. Oh, here we go. Not what I was looking for, but since this is a venomous insects video, we will actually take ants. You might not have known this, but ants are actually related to bees. And at first glance, this probably isn't obvious. You know, these are tiny little shiny black bodied animals, but they're actually all part of the insect order Hymenoptera. And when you actually look at their behavior, you can kind of see how they actually are related to bees. Because like bees, they live in groups. They're social insects. And they have distinct roles in their society, 
lot of these guys we're seeing here are all workers, but deep down on the ground, they actually have a queen. While with bees, we call it a hive, ants, we call it a colony, their function is kind of similar. Where with a lot of different animals, we see individual organisms acting as individual organisms. And with bees and ants, it's kind of different. They actually sort of function as one whole unit as a colony, and only one member of the colony is usually reproductive. That's the queen, where these workers usually are not. For the record, you, not all ants are venomous. Like this right here, little carpenter ant, the genus Campanotus, they actually can't sting. Totally harmless, kind of cute looking actually. And I bet a lot of people didn't know that carpenter ants can't sting, but don't be fooled. Just because this one is totally harmless and totally non-venomous does not mean that you should underestimate ants. While there are non-venomous ants, ants include some of the most toxic, venomous insects in the world. And sure, a lot of them are quite tiny, but like bees, when they swarm you, it's that dosage that makes the poison. Thousands of stings from a very, very angry ant swarm could really, really mess you up. But perhaps the most terrifying insect venom that I've studied comes from the assassin bug. These strange looking insects belong to the order Hemiptera, the true bugs. And while there are those that say the toxic cocktails they inject in their bites are nothing more than saliva, there is an increasing interest in the scientific community in the venoms of these insects. This is why. What you're looking at is mass cell death of human blood cells after exposure to assassin bug venom. What this means is that these insects possess powerful cytotoxins. Cytotoxins are a very insidious venom type, most well known from the brown recluse, because the stronger cytotoxins we see in the animal kingdom can cause necrosis and even organ failure. These true bugs act as ambush hunters, slowly stalking their prey before piercing it with their rostrum. They flood the insect with paralyzing venom, then dissolve their insides and suck them dry. If you find that chilling, you're not alone. Just be glad you're not an insect. But why are so many insects so venomous? What, what's the deal with that? When you're an insect, there's a lot of things that are a lot larger than you are, and it's not enough to be able to defend yourself against your own weight class. You need to be able to defend yourself against things much bigger than you. And if we look at the arthropod world in general, some of the most successful insect predators, like spiders and scorpions, are also venomous. So it seems like there's an evolutionary advantage to be venomous if you are an insect predator. And as a result, tons and tons of insects have evolved different types of venom. And speaking of that, there is one insect that reigns supreme in terms of being the most fearsome venomous insect that might be in your backyard and i actually know exactly where a nest might be all right what i'm about to attempt please don't try this at home our next venomous insect i actually happen to know there's a nest underneath this whole planting pot if i'm lucky i will not get stung seem too aggravated. Let's see if I can maybe just grab one. Maybe. Please, don't, please don't sting me. Ah. Okay. That was lucky. Oh. Have a look at that. She's mad now. Got a little bit lucky because it's cool this morning. So they're not quite as active, not quite as woken up. And it's a fairly small nest. This is a paper wasp. And these guys can be found pretty much all over. And they are impressive stingers. Just like with ants and bees, these guys are in the order Hymenoptera and they're venomous. Look at that abdomen right there. Paper wasps are no joke. One of the more painful stings we have here in the US, especially when you get swarmed. There are insects like the tarantula hawk, like the velvet ant, which are also wasps and are also venomous that have much more painful stings, but they're generally gonna use that sting once and then 
flee. These guys, if they're defending their nest, can sting you multiple times, and oh yeah, look how agitated she is. That abdomen is pulsing. I know that if I'm not careful, she'd be happy to sink that stinger right into my skin. And the thing is, paper wasps and yellow jackets, the social wasps, are actually really, really interesting because when it comes to defending their nest, they're a lot more likely to launch a preemptive strike than pretty much any other animal. While I would never consider them to be actually aggressive, these social wasps, paper wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets, are actually about as close to aggressive as it gets in the insect world. And these social wasps actually have a pretty impressive venom toxicity too. Like the honeybee, their venom toxicity is right up there with a lot of the venomous snakes that you might find. If we take a closer look at wasps, we can see just how perfectly adapted they are to be terrifying insect predators. Their venom is a paralytic that stops insects in their tracks, and their scissor-like jaws slice and crush their victims into a pulp they can vomit back up to feed their young. Almost like a horror movie equivalent of a bird feeding her babies. These insects have incredible vision. Large compound eyes give them a nearly 360 degree view of their world. You cannot sneak up on a wasp. As they forage in flowers, they have almost a cocky attitude. They know you see them, and they know that you know better than to mess with them. If you try your luck anyway, they are more than happy to teach you an excruciating lesson. But the wasps and other hymenoptera are important in more ways than one. Not only do they keep other insect populations in check and help pollinate our plants, but they also give cover for many other creatures as well. Beetles adopt ant-like disguises to ward off potential attackers. Moths are left alone by birds when they sport bee-like appearances. Even spiders have wasp-like coloration, and larger animals leave them all alone. Wasps might be the sort of insect neighbors that make you nervous, and that's okay, but they've shaped the secret world all around us in incredible ways. I know all the wasp mimics sure are thankful, because by just looking like them, they get to live to fight another day. One of the most cunning disguises probably belongs to this curious little jumping spider. From afar, he looks like a painful stinging velvet ant. But there's a lot more to his biology than meets the eye. If you want to dive deeper into the world of these incredible creatures, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.